This month is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. In honor of that, we have a well-known prostate cancer survivor in the house tonight. He will share his story and inspire us all. Wizards analyst Glenn Consor joins us on Toyota Sports Talk. From WJLA 24-7 News, this is Toyota Sports Talk. Hey everyone, welcome to Toyota Sports Talk. I'm Aaron Hawksworth. Thank you so much for joining us. Every 18 minutes, another American man dies from prostate cancer. That's a little more than 80 deaths per day and nearly 30,000 per year. That's enough to fill an entire baseball stadium. Our guest tonight is a prostate cancer survivor. He has a unique story. He is also a familiar face, Wizards analyst Glenn Consor. Look at that face. Thank you so much for joining us. You have an inspiring story. We had a chance to work at a prostate cancer event, Zero Walk Run, to end prostate cancer on Father's Day. And I had a chance to hear Glenn's story. And thank you so much for coming on and sharing it with us. Well, tonight. thanks for having me. And really, all I'm trying to do, Aaron, is, is pay it forward. You know, really pay my experience forward to the you know people that are struggling with this it's, it's an ugly disease you know it's cancer it needs to be caught early and i think that's the key so all i'm really trying to do is just spread the word mm -hmm. you know get your psa's checked it's so critical to get your psa's checked it doesn't matter what age you are just monitor it get it checked and all i'm trying to do is pay it forward to all the people my wife uh, my friends that have helped me. Awesome. Well, hopefully we can help someone at home tonight. If you want to call in, maybe you have a question or just want to comment, 703-387-1020 is the number. We have open phone lines tonight. And I feel like sometimes prostate cancer is something that men don't talk about as much as women talk about breast cancer. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, obviously with prostate cancer, you know, you have things that you have to worry about if you have your prostate removed. You know, you have to worry about incontinence, ED. Mm -hmm. You know, there's issues. And that's all this macho man, man stuff. And, th and that's something that you really have to get through. Aside from the physical element of this, there's an emotional element that really, if, you, if you're not aware of it before going into it, you know, it could really cause some problems. And I, I think I'm not afraid to talk about it. I fought it. I'm probably the, the worst. Um, patient to have something like this happen to because I'm I don't like being vulnerable and I don't like being told I can't do something well this is nothing to play around with yeah uh, and I've always been the type of guy that that fights through these things uh, this is something you can't fight through you have to be vulnerable and you know a lot of my my, my friends my wife really taught me all this um, as I went through this process. Yeah. Not only a former basketball player, but he still runs five to eight miles every day. Not anymore, close. Close, close, close. close. But you know, take us through when you went and had your PSA test in the first place and how it all came about. You know, and, and I think it's important for anyone that's listening to this, you know, just because your PSAs are elevated, it doesn't mean you have prostate cancer. You know, you could have an elevated PSA if you have an infection, like a cold or something like that. So through the years, I was getting physicals. I get a physical every year. Which um, is important. Which is very important. And during those physicals, I would have my PSAs tested. And they were going up. They were going down. It didn't matter. Um, but then it started to slowly creep up. And my general practitioner said, you know what, you really need to uh, you know, go to urologist and, and have him monitor this. And I did, and the numbers were pretty high. And, and really, the only way to determine if you have prostate cancer is not the PSA number, it's by getting a biopsy. Mm. And that will determine if you have it or not. So I, you know, all this stuff was going on. So during... your levels are going up, but you're also a, a Wizards analyst, busy in the middle of the season, Middle right? of the season, I'm running every day. I don't feel anything wrong. Um, I'm running, I'm healthy, I'm lifting weights, I'm doing all kinds, I'm still playing. And your wife was like, go get it checked or call. Yeah, you know, basically what happened was when I had the, finally had the biopsy, which was during the season, I didn't even think to call back. My urologist who did the biopsy said, called me and left me a message. My wife goes, well, did you call him back? I went, nah, I'm okay. I ran eight miles today, I'm okay. You know, <laughs> well, it doesn't work that way. Uh, with prostate cancer. Right, it really doesn't. Right. You know, I think like with breast cancer, you might find a lump or, right, right. you know, with, with any other type of there cancer, can be you, almost no you symptoms. might not feel well or something. This, this is, I really didn't have any symptoms except a high blood test with my PSA. Mm. So I felt great yeah. and like, I'm not going to call. And finally I called and he said, you need to come in and see me. And I'm like, I'm, you know, middle of the season. I didn't know, didn't really, you know, want to go in. Finally, my wife said, you know, you need to go in. And we both went in together and 
quite frankly, she was more on top of this stuff than I was mm -hmm. uh, because she was kind of ready, or at least more ready than I was. Even, even now, she still is. And then that kind of leads right into the emotional component that you were talking about. I mean, imagine here you are, you, you get the biopsy results, and now I'm sure so many things are going through your mind, and, and it, that's got to be so tough to hear. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's unlike any other cancer patient, though. Once you're finally told you have cancer and you need surgery, you know, there is a huge emotional component to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you have to come to terms with it. It's not an easy thing, especially, you know, in the macho world that I live in. Right, the you know, sports with, world. With prostate, removing your prostate, and everybody's worried about, you know, all kinds of performance issues. But you know what? Um, it, it takes time, and, and, you know, still, you know, I still struggle with it. And any man that has had that surgery that says they don't, uh, probably is not telling the truth 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to learn to be vulnerable. You have to learn to kind of live with it and deal with it. And, um, you know, I'm doing great. I'm healthy, and uh, I'm all good. The most recent research shows the five-year survival rate for all men with prostate cancer is nearly 100%. The relative 10-year survival rate is 98% and then 96% for 15 years. So that's great, you know, it, especially if you're talking about early detection as well. It, it's got to be hard to hear the C word and come to grips with right. all that, but at least they have come so far when it comes to prostate cancer as you, well. You, you know, that's why I think like organizations like, you know, Zero Cancer Dot org, um, who I love. I love all the people that are involved with this. Yeah, thing. me too. You know, it, these guys are doing a great job getting the word out. And I think you know, with the latest technology and, and, and the new resources that they have with prostate cancer, it, it's critical to get your PSAs checked because even if it's high, you know, one of the one of the things that I have on my Twitter account, which is you know Glenn Consor, you know, at Twitter. Right? People ask me questions. Hey, my PSA, and I, I just tell it like it is. You know, you, you've got to get it checked. You know, it's not a death sentence. And I think with all the resources that are helping people, you know, that's critical. I had a lot of great help. Mm. Prominent college coaches, because I started my career out doing 20 years of college basketball yeah. for Comcast and ESPN and, and all this stuff, will call me and say, hey, I had it. I just, nobody knows I had it, but let me tell you what to expect. Mm -hmm. I had all these people reaching out to me, and that's why I really want to pay it forward and help as well. So don't be, do not be ashamed. Do not feel like, you know, oh, you know, you lose vulnerability because you might have prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Not the case. You know, talk about it. You could talk about it with me. I'm on Twitter. Uh, organizations like Zero uh, Cancer.org are phenomenal for this. And I think the communication aspect is improving dramatically, and that's where the, that's to me, Erin, that's what the key is. And we have the number up on the screen right now, 703-387-1020. You can call in. Maybe you're going through something similar right now or a family member is. Let's go to Mike in North Bethesda first. What's up, Mike? Aaron, how are you? Good evening to you tonight. Good evening. Listen, this hits home to me because my father was diagnosed at age 66. And Glenn, congratulations to you um, for being a survivor. My Thank father you. was diagnosed at 66. He lived for 13 years with it. Uh, he played tennis until the last couple years. Um, he was um, very, did very well. Did very, he was always in good shape, just like you, Glenn. And the last year, it metastasized and hit his brain, and that's when he, he you know, he, he, we just couldn't do anything else for him. But he really did, did a wonderful job. He was a, a World War II veteran. He, he uh, fought in the Battle of Bulge. Came through it, you know, <laughs> you know, with, with no problems other than the P PTSD. They didn't call it that then, but um, uh, and uh, he's very well, you know. And he, he died, uh, you know, several years ago. But I had mine tested about a month ago. It was point one or one, which is good. Okay. Which is good. So you should be okay. But just keep getting it tested because my dad was in the same boat. He had it at 65. Uh, he had radiation. Uh, seeds implanted in him and he's 92 now so he kind of fought through yeah. it uh, but it's not an easy thing man if, if they don't catch it early it's a problem but you know I mean obviously you're so proud of your dad but Mike you make sure you get your PSAs continue to get them checked every year all right, and we've been talking about zerocancer.org. You can go to the website. They have this fun little, you can fill out these signs. Count me in is the hashtag. I'm fighting for all men. You fill this out. You can print it off when you go to zerocancer.org, and they will send you one of these bracelets. 
Who are you fighting for? I'm fighting for my boys. You know, okay. it, it, you know it is, obviously, th there's a component to this that's hereditary, and sometimes it's not. It doesn't matter. Uh, th there's no, it, it doesn't really, there's no prejudice with yeah. cancer. It, it really could hit anybody. But I'm worried about my boys, mm -hmm. you know. So, obviously, they're going to start to get tested at an early age, much earlier than if you're, if it's not hereditary. And so, my grandpa and had it. I'll, yeah. I'll talk a little bit about that right after this. And if you're on the line, stay there. We're back with Wizards analyst and prostate cancer survivor, Glenn Consort, right after this. Early detection, we're here as a team, and we're here to help men survive prostate cancer. Hi, we're Innova. Count us in. We, we are the Andrew Jackson Masons. Count us in. Count me in. Definitely count me in to promote awareness of prostate cancer. Welcome back and count me in. I'm fighting for all men, but when I filled this out, it got me thinking about my own dad and my brothers. Now, my grandpa on my mom's side, he had prostate cancer twice and later it spread and he died of pancreatic cancer. Um, but it had me thinking, you know, my brother's 35, should I be telling him to get tested even though he's younger than what's recommended? Yes, I mean, especially if it's in your family. I mean, I'm not, look, I'm not a doctor, but I, I, I look at it this way. Why not? What do you have to lose? You're going in, you're getting a, get your physical. Getting a physical is really important anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, check your cholesterol. You got to do blood tests. Get your PSAs checked. Ask the doctor to do it. Because what do you have to lose? Uh -huh. You know, if it's zero, it's zero. And then, you know, you, you get it tested the next year. It doesn't matter. Nothing to lose by getting it tested. Okay. Let's see what Lewis in Southeast has to say. What's up, Lewis? Hey, Lewis, you're on Sports Talk. All right. We're going to Michael in Northeast next. What's up, I'm, Michael? I, I, oh. I'm just going through it myself. Matter of fact, I had been diagnosed. I'm going back to work tomorrow. Mm. Um, that I've been off a couple of weeks. I had cyber knife and I had the seeds put in. And I really, I feel good. Early de um, detection was the key for me. Um, and I feel like I've been a spokesperson for people who didn't know. Mm. And I'm blessed to just be to hear this conversation, because I normally call in and talk about sports. Aww. But this is more than sports. This is something that's life-changing to us. And like you said, men don't want to hear that. But uh, we can play football, we can hit, and we can, you know, do all the other things that men do, but this is very important to the, the livelihood of our life. Mm. And um, so, but I'm going back to work tomorrow. I'm, I feel good. I didn't gain a little weight. <laughs> it's okay. But um, I did the cyber knife. Um, I got the seeds put in. Early detection was the key. And um, I just, this was a blessing that you're talking about something more than sports. Wow. Well, that's, and, um, that's great, Michael. And, and, uh, and best of luck to you with, with that. And, you know, if you had the cyber knife and you had the seeds put in, that means they caught it really early, so I'm sure you. Yeah. you know, I'm sure you got great doctors out there looking after you, and and it's great that you're calling in to talk about it because that's we need more men like you calling in like yeah, this. Yeah, brave. Well, I, I want to call out my doctor, Dr. Jeter from 3301 New Mexico Avenue, and and uh, uh, I went to Georgetown with um, Dr. Collins, and you know. Thank you so much, Lewis. Lewis is a regular viewer and we appreciate it. I know when I first started working with zerocancer.org and I thought, well, what can I do? I'm a woman, it's prostate cancer. And it's like, well, I work in sports. Most right. of the people who follow me and watch this show are men. So we, you know, at least once or twice a year try to do this and we probably should do it more. And I'm grateful that we're doing it to honor Prostate Cancer Awareness Month right well, now. Well, I, I think that's important because obviously, you know, men, you know, need to step up and get, get it checked and, you know, and share their knowledge of this, but it's also the women in our lives, you know, whether it's 
um, family members yeah. or you know your wife or a relative you know you have to stay on top of your men to make sure that they're getting this stuff done give them a little kick like what <laughs> like what my wife did with me yeah which she does with a lot of other things as well <laughs> let's go to michael in northeast what's up michael yes um good afternoon how are you doing today good thanks for calling in <clears throat> i i kind of feel like i'm that person you are knocking them on what was that? I'm sorry. Say that again, Michael. I feel like I'm the person on the info commercial, two or three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> right. constantly going to the restroom. Well, you know what? Have you? When was the last time you had your PSA checked? Did you get your PSA checked, Michael? No. Are you not there, Michael? Yes, I just had a check uh, last year. One more. Yes. Okay. What What did they say, Michael? Did, is it okay? Are you Are you okay? Um, my pH level is low, but my prostate is still enlarged. That's okay, though. I mean, they 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 have medication for that. Look at me talking like I'm a doctor. <laughs> no, but they, but it it really has nothing. You know, if your PSA if your prostate's enlarged, doesn't mean your PSA is high. So it seems like you know you're you're monitoring it, and I think that's the key, Michael. You got you calling in like that's important to us because. You know, there's a lot of men that are in similar situations right. to Michael. And it's Enlarged not an easy thing to talk no, about. No, enlarged prostate, but the PSAs are okay. So, you know, hopefully you keep that monitored. Let them make sure they monitor that for you. Thank you, Michael. And let's go to Osborne in Germantown. Yes, good evening. Thank you. Oh. First, I just want to say if you're calling in, we really appreciate it. But please turn your TVs down because there's a delay. And we want to make oh, sure sorry. we can okay. squeeze everyone in. <laughs> TV off. <laughs> All right, thank you. Are you there? Do you have a question yes, or comment? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Okay. Yes. What you got, Osborne? Can't hear you. Okay, I think maybe he needs to call back. I feel bad, but yeah, we can't, bad we can't reception. Hear can't Turn hear the TVs him. down so we can squeeze everyone in. Unfortunately, African-American men are considered high risk for developing prostate cancer, and we have some scary statistics. One in six African-American men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, and those men are 1.7 times more likely to get diagnosed and 2.3 times more likely to die from prostate cancer. And so as we were talking, Early detection is key. You know, we're trying to raise, raise awareness right now on this show. We're here with Glenn Consor. We're going to take a break. More thoughts with Glenn right after this. Welcome back. Take a look at your screen. Join Zero Cancer, the end of prostate cancer, for some top golf. It's Thursday, September 27th from 6 to 9 p.m. at Top Golf in Alexandria. Go to zerocancer.org to register. You can see the info there on your screen. Tee off against prostate cancer. It's a fun event with all proceeds benefiting Zero Cancer. So it's an incredible event to be a part of, and I'm going to be there. And I have a good golf prostate story. You do? All yes, right. I do. Let's, let's tee I gotta that off right to, now. I got to try to get to that event, by the way. Yes. But, I, you know, about a month ago, I was in Rhode Island. It was a college reunion. And I'm playing golf with my four buddies who I went to college with. They're all friends, uh, best friends, really. And three of the four of us had prostate cancer surgery. Wow. So, you know, we were all playing together and everybody's cracking jokes and, you know, kind of making light of it, but we all had it done and we're all getting older. It's all stories like that. And we all helped each other. One had it before. I was in the middle of the three of the, in the foursome wow. playing golf. And then we ran into another guy who met us for dinner who we knew from college as well. He had prostate cancer surgery. So we all went to dinner. So we went to Newport, Rhode Island, which is a beautiful place. You've been there, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And then we had to drive 40 minutes back to where we were staying in, uh, in Rhode Island. Two of the guys were from Texas. So we're driving back. My, uh, my friend just got a brand new Range Rover. Beautiful car, gigantic, like the biggest one you have, and leather seats. And, but I'm in the back seat in the middle. So it's all these big guys. 
we're, these big guys. So we're driving back, and all of a sudden we see the lights on in the back. Uh oh. We got pulled over by the police. So the police pulls us over, and this guy gets out of the car. Uh, a policeman gets out of the car. You know, we and we. I respect the policeman more than anybody. You got to show him all the respect. There's one guy in the group. One guy in the group who's always the troublemaker. Right from back when we were in college, always says the wrong things at the wrong time. So the officer pulls us over and goes, "You know, you were speeding, and nobody was drunk. Everybody was fine. You know, nobody drinks." And um, and the driver who had the brand new car, he's one of the guys from Texas. So he goes, "You were speeding. You were going 50 and a 35. Let me see your license." So he pulls out a license and registration. He pulls out his Texas license plate in Rhode Island, life driver's license. <laughs> Can't find his registration, doesn't have it. So he goes back to the police car and he's not laughing at all. He's not, there's nothing funny about it. He goes, comes back and he goes, well, tell me where you guys were. Mm. Where were you guys? So the guy in the front seat who was the troublemaker goes, why do you need to know where we were? So it's not starting out well, right? And I'm thinking, you know, here I am, I'm up in age and I'm gonna end up uh, on a golf trip uh, in, in, uh, in jail. So police, the policeman goes back, back to his car, he checks the license, he still, my buddy still, we're looking for the registration, still doesn't have it, right? Comes back and goes, look, I, you know, I need to give you a speeding ticket, and my buddy in the front seat goes, listen, doc, you know, we're all good friends here, we, uh, you know, it's a reunion, and I gotta be honest with you, there's only one guy in this car that has their prostate. <laughs> Just one, everybody else doesn't. The, the policeman, who's a young guy, he loved it. Awesome! He loved it, I he laughed. It. No ticket. Uh. He didn't, he let us go. <laughs> there you go, you guys deserve it for being prostate cancer survivors. Final thoughts with Glenn Constable right after this. All right, quick wrap. Um, in about 10 seconds, final thoughts for folks at home. My final thoughts are, you know, no matter what, where you are in this process of, of being diagnosed, number one, get, get your PSA checked. Just get them checked. Doesn't matter what age you are, get them checked. And if, if it goes up, if it goes down, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of people that you could talk to about it to make it easier. There's a lot of resources out there. Just ask.